Poincaré, by the end of the 19th century, wrote a wonderful paper on the philosophy of space. What is space? Uh, everybody should read it. Actually, it's one of the very few papers that he wrote in English. Poincaré is a realist. The physical world exists. But unlike Kant, he would not say that when we come to this life, we have Euclidean geometry in our mind. The a priori concept that belongs to human beings is not three-dimensional space. The a priori concept that we have, all of us, that we share, is the mathematical concept of groups. But groups, plural, meaning that it is through experience between my body and the external world that my mind will progressively select the correct group which is best suited to understand what's arriving to me. So this is higher level uh, uh, um, thinking. For Newton and Kant, the space is three-dimensional because God created it this way. I'm sorry, for Newton and Leibniz, God created it this way. For Kant, it is three-dimensional because God created my mind in this way. Okay? For Poincaré, it's very different. My mind selects the group which is convenient to understand my world. Let me explain that uh, a little bit more. This is... Uh, uh, um, when we, in our everyday life, frequently, we see things which are changing locally. Let me give you a very simple-minded example. You have this uh, uh, chessboard, and something is happening in the middle. A horse is rotating. When you see this little animation, because you had similar experiences, when you are a child, or maybe because your ancestors had similar experiences, you know, your brain knows that you can counterbalance this change by a motion of your body. If yourself, if you rotate around the chessboard, you know that the horse does not move. So I know that some motions of my body are able to counterbalance some changes in my perception. Of course, the same change of perception can be counterbalanced by several different motions. I could rotate this way, or I could rotate this way, or whatever. So this gives some equivalence relation in the space of motions of my body. And the corresponding quotient space is a group, which is the group of symmetries of space. And my brain has built in the concept of group. So my brain will select the group which has been selected through experience. Experience being interaction between the outside world and my own body, my own mind. So Poincaré gives many examples. One of them is this. How do we, why do we commonly say that our visual space is three-dimensional? Well, if you think a bit, you see that on our retina, the images are two-dimensional. But we have some additional information for distances. I can use the bi binocular vision, but I can also use the accommodation of the muscles of a single eye to detect distance. It is an experimental fact that these two ways of measuring distances are the same. Poincaré says, let's imagine that we would be some kind of aquatic creatures. We would be swimming in some ocean. And assume that the ocean has a refraction index which is non-constant. Then 
measuring distance using accommodation of the eye or measuring distance using binocular vision would be not coherent. That would be two different informations. And then, according to Poincaré, my mind would have selected another group. And we would decide that we would live in dimension four because it would be more convenient for us to use this higher, more complicated group to understand the external perception. That's the so-called conventionalist theory in the philosophy of knowledge. This is another example that I like very much. When you receive light in your eye, the light is a wave. And this wave can be decomposed in uh, harmonics. One harmonic for each wavelength. But this number of possible wavelengths is infinite. It could be any, any positive number. Hence, the space of possible lights coming into my eye is infinite dimensional. However, in the back of my retina, I have three kinds, not four. I have three kinds of captors. Each captor is capturing a specific wavelength, or more precisely, a specific bracket of wavelength. One for red, one for green, and one for blue. So that means that, for me, even though the external world is infinite dimensional, the way my brain is understanding it is three-dimensional because it only depends on three numbers. If I want to select a color on the computer screen, I give three numbers. And why three and not four? Just because of biology. Because we are built this way. We have three captors. We do not have four. Look at this little shrimp. It's called a mantis shrimp. It belongs to the category of uh, stomatopoda. Uh, according to biologists, this shrimp has the best vision system in the world. It has no less than 16 kinds of receptors on the retina. So these bugs, they live in a 16-dimensional color space. So next time you meet a friend and he, he tells you that he's colorblind, you should think yourself that you, we are all colorblind. We miss all these dimensions. This little bug would find a Milner's fear completely trivial. <laughs> well, they live in dimension 16. OK, so I wanted to insist on that, that according to Poincaré, our brain is ready to understand any dimension. It's just a matter of experience. Experience between you and the outside world will teach you what is the space that you need, what is the group that you need. Let's have a look at what Poincaré says. It's always good to read Poincaré. Poincaré says, there is a topology of more than three dimensions. I do not say that this is an easy science. I have devo devoted too much effort to it not to have taken account of the difficulties which are encountered in it. But nevertheless, this science is possible. And it does not rest exclusively on analysis. So those of you which think that uh, n dimension is just n numbers are wrong. Analysis is not enough to understand topology. It could not be pursued successfully without a continual appeal to intuition. Therefore, there is, a surely, there is surely an intuition about the continua of more than three dimensions. And if it demands more sustained attention, it is doubtless a matter of habits. Do we not see in our high schools pupils who do well, who do well in plane geometry, but we cannot visualize space? It is not the intuition of three-dimensional space which is lacking. 
but they are not in the habit of using it, and they need to make an effort to do so. So again, three dimension, four dimension, seven dimension, 16 dimension is just a matter of experience. I shall conclude that there is in all of us an intuitive notion of the continuum of any number of dimension, whatever, because we possess the capacity to construct a physical and mathematical continuum. And this capacity exists in us before any experience. It is the exterior world, it is the experience, which induces us to make use of it. So you can think of Something like languages. Babies do not speak any language, but they have the ability to learn language. Babies do not speak any dimension, but they have the ability to understand group theory. 